you find yourself standing in a room. Each of the four walls has a door and you don't know what lies beyond those doors, but your curiosity nudges you closer towards one. You open the door and you step into another room, which offers three new doors. Those doors lead to new rooms to explore, rooms that you couldn't have reached from that first room. Opening doors and stepping into adjacent rooms creates new possibilities for exploration. This is how author Steven Johnson explains the concept of the adjacent possible, a term he uses to describe how the discovery of one innovation unlocks the potential to discover further innovations and how innovations can combine in new ways to make even more combinations possible. As applications become more distributed and more complex, I believe that there's also an adjacent possible of failure. Small failures can create the possibility for new failures. Minor, inc minor incidents, minor issues, performance degradations, they can all combine to create major catastrophes. If our businesses can be intentional about innovation, then I think we can also be proactive about failure and reliability. There are three types of knowledge. There are the known knowns, the things that you know that you know. There's the known unknowns, the things that you know that you don't know. And there's the unknown unknowns, things that are so far beyond your visibility that you're not even aware that you don't know them. When it comes to failure, we have known knowns, well understood ways that our applications can fail. And so we write tests to ensure quality and we build systems to automatically remediate them. And we also have known unknowns. This is why we have monitoring tools, tools that will alert us when our applications show signs of failure, but for reasons that we don't know beforehand. And so we're unable to create those tests or those automatic fixes beforehand. But we also have unknown unknowns major disasters that haven't happened yet and that are beyond our conception of what's possible. And so we have no monitoring, no remediation tools. We just have hope. We hope that they don't happen. So the amazing thing about chaos engineering and why I love it and why I talk about it so much and why I practice it is that it allows us to explore our known unknowns. In doing this, we can convert our known unknowns into known knowns. And we get a better understanding of what our failure modes look like and how to remediate them or avoid them. But the truly incredible thing is that as you do this, you can uncover more unknowns, converting your unknown unknowns into known unknowns, reducing your blind spots. Getting started with chaos engineering is easy. First, you observe your systems to establish a baseline for normal operations. What do things normally look like? And second, then from that information, you develop a hypothesis. How do you think your systems will respond to failure or stress? How do you expect this failure to manifest in your application? And then you inject that failure and you collect data. The fourth part is to analyze the data. What did you learn? How can your system be improved? And importantly, what else could happen? What are the adjacent possibilities of failure that were made possible? How could they come together and collude to turn this failure that you injected into a major catastrophe? Considering the adjacent possibilities exposes your unknown unknowns and provides you with an opportunity for further exploration and learning. And that leads to the last step, and that's to iterate, to continue exploring 
and share what you discover so that everyone can learn. Speaking of sharing and learning, come join the chaos engineering community where thousands of engineers are sharing their own chaos engineering experiences and we're all learning together. If you'd like to do that and you'd like more information on chaos engineering, visit gremlin.com slash community, get involved. Thanks, Jason. That was fascinating as always. And we actually have a couple minutes. Uh, and I, I have a couple questions for you, if you don't mind. Could you, yeah. could you answer some questions? For me? Always happy for questions. So the first one is you've been involved, you've been involved in this community for a long time, but also chaos engineering. This is not new to you. You've, you've been uh, learning and sharing about this for a while. What do you think is is one of the things that you've changed either in the way you think or the way that the practice has evolved over the last couple of years and how you might think about this differently than you did before? Yeah, that's a great question. I think to, to answer the two parts of that, one, the way that the practice has evolved is incredible. It started, I think everybody is familiar with Netflix and the idea of Chaos Monkey and this random chaos of taking down servers to see if you're reliable, sort of this testing the system. And as it's evolved, it's become more methodical, more of a well-honed practice of defining a hypothesis and testing things out, being more rigorous, which allows you to learn more. So I think that's one bit of evolution. The second in my own personal journey has gone from the systems thinking of how can we make more reliable systems to that understanding that our systems are only as good as the engineers that build them. So in order to improve our systems, we need to be better as engineers, and that requires learning and understanding more. So that's my own personal shift, is really starting to think about things like this, like the adjacent possible, as ways that we can learn to make ourselves better, and then subsequently, that'll make our systems better. I have kind of a, this is, this is connected as well, uh, so bear with me. Um, one of the things that I miss about the olden days when we traveled for conferences is uh, if you don't know, Jason knows food and he knows good food and he knows how to make great food. And I've been able, I miss being able to like get his recommendations on stuff. But now I want to think like, have you, have you sort of put that chocolate and peanut butter together? So how, how does chaos engineering maybe apply to, you know, the preparation of, of fine, fine cuisine? That's, that's a fantastic question. I, I think as we talk about learning and exploring things, you know, you talked about putting the peanut butter and chocolate together, right? And I think we do chaos engineering all the time in our own lives, especially with things like cooking. Cause with cooking, you're, you're constantly like, I want to make something and I have this ingredient, that ingredient. And I know that generally a recipe calls for something, but I may not have it. So let me just raid the pantry and see what else I could throw in there. And you do that in production, right? You throw it together and you end up eating it. And sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's awful. But you try that thing because there's a safe space to do it. Like, what's the worst that can happen? You make something and it doesn't taste that great. And so I, I think the same applies to chaos engineering and our tech systems. You know, as we talk about DevOps and building, you know, cultures of safety and trust, uh, you know, blamelessness, we need to adopt that. And that's a key part to moving into chaos engineering is that safety of what's the worst that can happen? Well, if I'm starting in a rigorous practice and I'm starting in staging and building comfortability before I'm going into production, you should have that safety and trust similar to throwing ingredients together and trying them. And it may not taste good. You may have some slight issues, but overall, if you have that culture, you're going to be in a good spot to learn and find those combinations that work. So what I'm hearing is the fact that I once, all I had was peanut butter, bananas, and tortillas, and I made something out of that. I should be able to get a job at Netflix. Got it. I'm going to yeah. send that off to the recruiting manager. Also, person. that's a great combo. I love that combo. <laughs> it, it did work out well. It did. Well, Jason, thank you as always for an inspiring talk and, and a fun chat.